Alright, shalom, shalom, shalom. Rastafari. Okay, what we want to do is to continue on the particular teaching that we are teaching on. This is a follow-up to a previous series of videos that were concerning what we are called the Red, Black, and Green Revolution. And this is speaking of the the uprising or the Patriot Uprising in um, North Africa, in that Keystone country. That Keystone country um, is Libya. And if you understand the, the Keystone, some call it maybe a capstone, but it's more of a Keystone, Libya is, is very important in that way. And this, this history of Libya, this geographical um, importance, is, is very, very key and very, very significant. But in the teaching that we have been, if you've seen the other videos before this, you'll know that we've touched on um, Amalek, Amalek. And I said in one particular video, we broke up down the metaphysical link with that. We've touched on briefly Agag, at least that Agag, A-G-A-G, -G, is actually, this is the Hebrew, and the Hebrew is Agag, right? However, when you now, when you now go side the reel on it, let's get this right here, it's, it's Agag. But in the ancient Egypt, this will be a pep or a pepper. Now, if you know anything about the Hyksos, the Hyksos, um, the whole Hyksos period, it's very interesting what happened in the Hyksos period. Because in the Hyksos period, when the Hyksos were kicked out and the native rulers of ancient Egypt came back to power, many people are, there's a big debate about whether the Hyksos are really, are the Israelites um, was it was it the Jews or the Hebrews that were the Hyksos and who actually was kicked out? And because they cannot really determine who the Hyksos are or the the question around the Hyksos, see what happened was this basically. Let's just make the the, uh, the long and the short out of it. Let's just make it even and right and exact. The Hyksos who were kicked out of Egypt when Kamose or Ahmose. Um, drove them out to re restore what they say in Egyptology are the native rulers back to power. These Hyksos were Edomites. Let us understand this. The, the Hyksos who were kicked out were Edomites. Where's our marker right here so we can um, highlight this? Okay, here we go, right here. The Hyksos were Edomites, were Esau's children. So the Edomites, let's say Edom and Esau, right? equals both the Hyksos and Agog, Agog, who was the last Apep. And that period of the Hyksos rule began for Pep and it ended for Pep. Now, the ending part we have biblically as Agog. Now, Agog is, of course, related to Amalek. Now, Amalek is also related to Haman. See, now, what's the connection? So if you've seen the first part of this series here, because this is a follow-up to the video and the series of videos that we did on the Red, Black, and Green Revolution and on the so-called uprising against Muammar Gaddafi that began some months ago. We were on the first to actually get right out there, and we even went against so-called our base, so to speak, of, you know, some of the black people here in the West who are, um, you know, you know pan-Africanists. We went against you know, the popular, the popular assumptions that many people believe, because many of the so-called Afrocentrics, they are really lamenting what happened to Gaddafi, and they're making out Gaddafi to be actually more than he was, and kind of trying to find a bigger conspiracy. And the real conspiracy is that Gaddafi basically dug a pit, and the pit that he dug, he fell in it. Now, now let's understand a couple of things. Gaddafi, for us as Rastafari, properly, rightly, and exactly, Gaddafi was a telat. He was an enemy. Some of the the ignorant Rasta-ish people can't really, when we say ignorant, they just don't know this. They probably believe the hype and the illusion out there. There's a lot of so-called Pan-African people, too, that, 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 that don't know the truth. And they're caught up in they're caught up in a losing in a losing proposition because they don't want to recognize that the real father of modern Africa is Kedamawi Haile Selassie, and even in the Gaddafi Libya situation, he kicked out the one who he came to power in the bloodless coup, King Idris. King Idris was part of that true 
pan-Africanness that fought against the European colonialists and they kicked out the Italians and, and, and the fascists and Mussolini's people out of Libya. So the one that Gaddafi came in to overthrow actually was one who went against the same enemies who invaded Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, and other parts, namely the Italians and the fascists and, and, and Mussolini's running dogs. So this, this makes me question, from a historical perspective, Gaddafi's um, legitimacy, right? And we said this even before. We were some of the first, if you were following the videos, we were trying to signal ones and ones, and it was, like we mentioned before, we were a little bit saddened, you know, in, in our psychic state, because we know that, you know, once we recognized what was going on, and, and the message was given. It's like in the times of the prophets. When men of the prophets, Daniel, look at Donnell. Donnell fainted when he got that message, when, when he recognized what was going on, what Yahweh, what the Lord was revealing, what Adonai was revealing to him. He, he fainted. You understand? We have Jeremiah, Eremias in the scriptures too. When he recognized, you know, what it, you know, the message that he had to deliver to the people and the people are not going to receive, generally speaking, the message because they are, they are astray. This is why he brings forth these news bearers. And what we're doing through this channel and other channels and our brothers and sisters who, who choose and elect to repost these videos all over the web, what we're doing is bearing news. Now, it's not PC news. So it's the truth, and some people are going to be offended. Some people may like what we say here, but don't like what we say there. Listen, study and show yourself approved. You know, if one has a difference based on truth, and we are in error concerning truth, and you have the proof and the evidence, all right. But if it's just something you don't like because you're ignorant of what we're really speaking about, then you should really just keep silent and just learn and study. And we say this because there's a lot of folks that are not going to like where we've, you know, what we've said so far, but our word concerning Gaddafi has basically come to pass. And we labeled him as his Haman. And as soon as we put forward the, the Sabbath uh, Zakor, Sabbath Zakor, that Amalek's son, Amalek's son, or grandson of Amalek, but he's a descendant of Amalek. Amalek is a descendant of Esau and Edom, was Haman. Now, Haman sought the extermination or the annihilation of the Jews, of the Hebrews. And, you know, personally, you know, we don't really care what, what anybody may want to think about this particular matter, whether one is the ethnic Hebrews, you know, speaking about those of the melanin, the ethnic Hebrews like I and I and I, or whether one is a Chaza or converted Jew, if one is keeping this way of life in spirit and in truth, we're not for these other ones, such as many of the Ishmaelites and the rest of them, because they have caused problems for we as the, the chosen seed. Yes, it's a family affair, but this is where the whole Ishmaelite, Israelite thing breaks down, and we as black people are right in the eye of the storm. So there's a lot of ignorant folks out there who get caught up on so-called pan-Africanness and, 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 and Afrocentricity who are being lied to and deceived and, 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 and are crying for the enemy and are weeping for the enemy. We, we acknowledge it's a sad thing that happened, but we don't lament in that sense for Gaddafi. They gave him time he could have got out. But what is the nature of this beast? Because he was a, like Haman was a symbol, but even Haman was a symbol of Amalek. And Amalek traces back to Esau and Edom. So let's continue this metaphysical teaching that we have embarked upon. Let's bring forward the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. And if anybody want to get a free download of it, you can go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, and there's a PDF version there. One can use it, download it, use it on your computer, or on your tablet, or on your smartphone to look up certain names and certain words and understand it in its true spiritual or what we say is the meta beyond the physical aspect, which is very key and, and, and is very important. So we're going to continue on, on uh, Haman. So let's touch on Haman. Since we already touched on Amalek briefly, we touched on Agag and Apep, that Agag and Apep connection. We'll get into y'all willing some more details on that. But as we go here to Haman, to Haman, let's make some space right here to Haman. Who was Haman and why did we liken Gaddafi to Haman. You see, some people did not understand, probably, 
really what we meant when we likened Gaddafi a couple of months ago in the video, I think it was around June, around June 11th, June 17th. You'll see it up there on our channel on the YouTubes, hopefully, and hopefully other ones have posted it elsewhere, but it's on the Ethiopian World Net, the YouTube's channel, Ethiopian World Net. It's called the Sabbath of Zakor. The Remembrance Sabbath connected with the events that happened to our black queen, Aster, or known otherwise as Esther and Hadasha, in uh, Persia. Persia is modern-day Iran, and Iran, Persia, is the end of the Babylonian matrix. Take a note of it that we, we've told you so. They keep talking about Iran, 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 Iran in the news. You have to know something, that Iran is the end of the Babylonian matrix. And they would do better, in a sense, to just leave Iran alone. But someone told me years ago, a uh, brother told me, I don't know what happened to this brother, whether he's, he's in this world or in, in the next. But he said to me and to a couple of others that was with I, he said that Babylon and the system of things will fall by accident. Yes. In other words, from their perspective, they're going to bring themselves to, to their ultimate end but it's not going to be intentional on their part. You know what I'm saying? But Babylon will fall, in a sense, by accident or, in other words, by miscalculation. Like we said, they should basically leave um, Iran alone. And we think that because of the situation with Obama and the re-election, that perhaps they might try some sort of strike or the state of Israel may, may strike there, um, you know, to stop the whole nuclear thing, so forth and so on. But be that as it may, we're going to the root and the foundation of our history and how this connects with us and how we've interpreted this vis-a-vis -vis and in connection with, um, with us today in the present time. So the video, we've, we've done a couple, couple of videos roughly, it was right around the Purim time, because it was significant that the events that happened were connected in our Hebrew holy, holy uh, calendar and according to the, the weekly and the annual Senbets or Sabbaths or Shabbats, that the Shabbat at that time was connected to the events in um, the book of Esther and how Haman sought to exterminate the Jews. Now, how does Gaddafi get caught up in this? Is it because of that Pan Am bombing, so forth and so on, the Lockerbie bombing? Well, that's a part of it. Because not only the so-called white Jews that Gaddafi sought to exterminate, but it's also the black Jews. And we're speaking about the lion of the tribe of Judah or Moa on Bessa, the Imma, Negeta, Yehuda. This is why recently Gaddafi would call himself the lion of Africa, the king of kings of Africa, so forth and so on. He played himself, and he got played out. You understand? So what he did was treasonous. What he, what he did was traitorous. He wanted to ch take the OAU from Addis Ababa, where it was created and established by our father, and put it into territory of his people, namely into Egypt. He, wanted to, he uses money to fund insurgents, in Eritrea to fund insurgents in the Horn of Africa and other insurgents against the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, against our Judeo-Christian, our Hebrew establishment. He was an enemy, an open, disrespectful enemy to his imperial majesty, to our father, the true father of Africa. And still, he had mercy all these years. He, he had the opportunity, even in his situation, to leave, but he did not. And we expected that he would not. And because things were escalating, when we got that message about the Sabbath, the Zakor, and the other messages concerning Libya, and you can go back and look at these postings and messages from the very first message that we put out, and video, vlog that we put out, and there's maybe about, I don't know, four or five maybe a little less than, yeah, about four or five videos that we, we put out. We're going to go through it again, seeing that the events have turned out like they've turned out, but it's particular the Sabbath Zakor message, where we spoke about Amalek's son, Haman, and then we linked that with Gaddafi. Some didn't get it. We're sure that more of the so-called Orthodox and the Jews, the European, German, and Polish Jews, and some of them in the state of Israel, if they bothered to even consider 
the message, they got it. You understand? They got it. But some of our people perhaps didn't really get the significance of that message because not knowing what is the true background or the metaphysical background of 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 of, of, of the person who's being mentioned. And we mentioned Amalek. Who is Amalek? In the former video, the, 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 the part before this present part, we discuss Amalek from the metaphysical Bible perspective. Now what we're going to do right here is we're going to touch on Haman. We're going to touch on Haman or Haman and find out exactly who was Haman. Now, according to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, first of all, we're going to deal with the physical, you know, and it was the natural before we deal with the spiritual or the supernatural. We're going to deal with uh, the earthly before we deal with the heavenly. We're going to deal with the physical before the metaphysical. So now the first thing we need to touch on is his name. Now, this is Hebrew. Haman is Hebrew from Persian. And it means magnificent, splendid, celebrated, famed, solely or only. It, it, it's linked with the planet Mercury. Remember Mercury, you know, uh, Mercury, well, you've got to make the connection, but Haman is linked with the planet Mercury. And it's interesting because there's a whole planetary thing going on. There's signs in heavens as well. It's, Haman is linked with noise. Haman is linked with arrogance. Haman is linked with a tumult. Haman is linked with inner commotion, and Haman is linked with trouble. Now, automatically, everything, all, all the, um, the adjectives and everything that we use to describe Haman, they, they properly fit Gaddafi, you see. Now, who was Haman? Haman was the son of Hamedatha, the Agagite. This is what we went to Agag and made the Agag and the Pep. Link that the Hyksos takeover of Egypt began with an Apepa and an end with an Apepa. But in the Hebrew, a pep is a gog, a gog. So that G becomes a P, the P becomes a G, so forth and so on. Here's how we, we can look at the ancient histories and see the biblical and basically the one and the same and, and make sense out of this picture. Now, when the Hyksos were driven out, it was not the Hebrews who were driven out. When the Hyksos was driven out, it was the children of Esau or the Edomites and their mixed multitude, predominantly that was driven out. It was not, when, when the Hyksos were driven out, this is when the king arose who did not know Joseph and when the Hebrews in Gibbet or the Gebetah became persecuted. So a lot of folks don't really understand that, and they'll make ones believe that, well, the Hyksos were, were the Jews or the Hebrews or the Israelites, and that's not so. So that's why that, that interpretation or misinterpretation, it fails to reconcile all of the information that's available there. But the interpretation that we present, only a few out there really even either have this or have any greater or have a little bit less or even in the proper orientation of this. So like we said before, all we're doing is giving some of the, the core information, the basic information, but there's other information out there that one can look up for themselves. And we're not saying you should believe this or you should accept that. This is what we have come to the conclusion. We can defend these particular conclusions. And if, if not, if one has some information that, that, that disputes with this, we'll present it. In other words, let us reason as Jah Adonai or as Yahweh says. Let us reason. Now, Haman, who was Haman? I will, more fire, more fire. Who was Haman? Haman was the son of Hamadatha, the Haggai. He was very high in the favor of King Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus is the Hebraic, Anglo-Hebraic way of saying Xerxes. Xerxes, you know, there was a movie a couple of years uh, I think years ago, I think it was a 300 or something like that. Yeah, that was the movie that talked about um, Xerxes. Interesting. Um, there's some more we could say about that, but let's just go, get through this right here. So he was in the favor of King Ahasuerus or Xerxes of Persia. But here's, here's the key. Here's the key connection with Gaddafi. You know what I'm saying? With Gaddafi. And 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 um, we as black Jews or as the 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 Hebrews or the Ethiopians, he fought against the king of kings. Gaddafi was an enemy to Kedemawi, Haile Selassie, and he was one of the the plotters against the throne of David and the establishment of it. 
in Ethiopia in favor of his um, um, the Arab and Mohammedan agenda. So this uh, Haman, being in the favor of King Aha Suarez of Persia, he laid a plot for the destruction of all the Jews who were in that land. And believe it or not, many of these Mohammedans and these so-called Ishmaelites have done the same thing to the black Hebrews in the land of Africa and Gaddafi in particular with the black Hebrews and the line of the tribe of Judah in Ethiopia. So it shouldn't surprise us that he would go after the converts to Judaism, the Europeans, the Germans, or the Polish Jews. You understand? And we're not dealing with all this other kind of nonsense, the demonizing of entire people. We know that there is so-called good or righteous and unrighteousness in, in every particular people. But in some people, it is overwhelming. You understand? It is overwhelming. The whole people almost was given up to that. Same as the Libyan people. They were given up to submitting to Gaddafi. But something changed. Something changed recently. And this goes beyond the so-called uh, Illuminati, Freemason, New World. Even they were shocked at what happened because this is also a message we want to put out. We were thinking about it before. We're going to do an individual message, but we just put it in this particular message that um, um, the president, President Obama, even though he, he may take the credit for what happened or his administration and they should be given um, um, X amount of credit for what they have done. However, we must be also uh, very much aware that there's many so-called Americans and politicians and other key people in this land who are not really happy about what happened to Gaddafi. Why? Because they were in bed with him. This is why this tyrant, this monster, they have a saying, they have a saying, the white supremacists and the rest of them, they have a saying. They say, better the devil that you know than the devil you don't know. So they were willing to allow those people to be persecuted. This is why when they went into some of Gaddafi's offices, they started to find a whole bunch of paperwork and documentation that actually linked, that actually linked um, um, America with, with Gaddafi, that they were in bed together, even though Gaddafi on the surface superficially was pretending to be against the West and so forth and so on. So what really happened there? I think it's, it's wrong if one is going to assume that this was some, some kind of big old plot of the West to take Gaddafi out of there. In fact, the West, many in the West were reluctant you understand? We're reluctant to taking Gaddafi to to to, to, to taking Gaddafi um 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 out of 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 power. This is why if you go back over what happened and and how it actually happened, they didn't want to go at it. They were trying to act like no, we don't want to get we have boots on the ground and rah 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 so forth and so on. But Obama should be credited uh, for recognizing the time and taking that proactive, that proactive, that proactive stance. And some people say, well, he's just doing that for America. Listen, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, of my brothers and sisters, and we're on this rock too. You understand? So everything that America does, we're in America right now. You understand? So we're a part of this as well. So if you are so dead set against America, then in a sense you shouldn't be there. Otherwise, we should stir things towards the way that we know is right and exact. You understand? This is not our land. This is the land that we're in. We should not assume it's our land. But while we're here, you understand, we should utilize, you understand, those things for our benefit. And, and what has happened in North Africa and what's happening in the so-called Arab Spring is for our benefit. You see, because the same thing happened during the times of just leading up to the exodus of the, of the children of Israel. The very same things happened. What do we mean by the same things um, happened then? The whole Middle East area was destabilized. There were signs in heaven and earth. Some say the Nibiru, the Elanine, these comments were even changing those climatic changes too. You understand? There were wars and there were rumors of wars and so forth and so on. This is why the Israelites, when they came out 
if they had gone straight into the promised land, they could have taken it over. But they waited. You understand? They were afraid. And this allowed many of the enemies, the same Hyksos and the Edomites and the rest of them, to lay hold on that land that was, that was coveted to Jah's people, that was coveted to um, Yahweh's, Yahweh's people. So um, let us not make any um, mistake about that. So Obama should really, you know, be cautious because um, we regard that there's a lot of folks, you understand, there's a lot of folks who were very, very, or who are, should we say, not were, but um, who are very, very upset with what Obama did. But we should give some credit to Obama, and we call Susan Rice. Susan Rice is like a black Esther. You understand? Know She's like a part of that sisterhood like Esther. Now, people say, why do you say that? She's working for America. She's working for the government. And where these people are speaking from, where are they? Are they in Africa? You understand? Know are they in another country? Or are they still here in America, right? Okay. You, you see what I'm saying? So the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy of it, they're not even being wise as serpents, harmless as doves. But be that as it may, there's a lot of folks who are very, who have lost money. A lot of them have lost money because, um, um, Gaddafi is no longer uh, in, in power. Mm. And there's no guarantee that the next, um, that the next uh, government is going to be so inclined in the, same, in the same way. So that wasn't a popular thing, a popularist thing. They just want Obama to, to, to forget about it. You understand? And they would have allowed those people, the Ben Ghazi or Ben Aghazi, the, the red, gold, the red, black, and green revolutionaries to get massacred. Remember, the flag of Libya, the real revolutionary flag was the red, black, and green. This is the flag of King Idris, who, who, who fought against and kicked out the Italians and the Europeans and the colonizers and joined with revolutionary leaders like Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia in the whole Pan-African, African liberation movements. But then Gaddafi comes along while the king is away in, um, in, in, in Egypt, and he has a so-called bloodless coup. You know, he talks a lot of rhetoric, but he was in, in, the, in the pocket of the West, and he persecuted his people. This is why many people have looked at Libya and said, Libya got so... For the number of people that it has there, it should not have the the poverty and and the and the amount of oil money that that's there as well, the poverty or backwardness. So some of you Pan Africanists really need to really reconsider because he threw some 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 blood money at a couple of black people. I think even Farrakhan and Nation of Islam, so forth and so on. So what? You understand this this you know? Can you be bought so easily? It's obvious that many have, but Gaddafi, like Haman, the son of Hamadatta, the Agagite, or the Apepite, he laid a plot for the destruction of all the Jews or all the Hebrews who were in that land. Now, he was thwarted. He was thwarted. His plot came to nothing, however, by Mordecai and by Aster or by Esther, and he was hung or hanged on the gallows that he had built for Mordecai. And this is what's so very interesting. The very same thing that he had planned for us and for our people happened to him. And that's what we see in those disturbing videos. You understand? Those, those, those brutal and violent videos that portray the last, um, or record the last uh, moments of Muammar Gaddafi, um, what he planned for others, it's like the pit that he dug for others fell on him. And you find this in Esther, the third to the ninth chapter. So if you read the book of Esther, the third to the ninth chapter, and you put the matter in its proper context, with an awareness of the real history of Africa, the Middle East, so forth and so on, you will understand why we take such a stance and took such a stance against Gaddafi. And it was so very interesting that what happened to um, Gaddafi, what befell Gaddafi also befell his sons. And this is also part of that whole, what we're talking about here, the connection with Haman. You understand? Now, metaphysically, um, Haman is very interesting because metaphysically, Haman, the son of Hamadatta, 
was the Jews' enemy, according to Esther chapter 9, verse 10. And he stands for the activity, for a certain type of activity of, of carnal consciousness, the activity of the phase of carnal consciousness in man, the adversarial mind, the adversarial or the satanawi um, mind or spirit that, that gives itself up particularly to working against man's religious thoughts and tendencies. And this is also what Gaddafi did and had been demonstrated by his past 40, uh, 42 or so years. His highest spiritual beliefs and aspirations, and the height of that is the black Hebrews or the Jewish or Hebraic identity. Whether it is black as it is in its natural branches or the wild olive tree grafted in, whether it is in this European, German, Polish, what we call the OJs or the other Jewish, the, other, the form of the other Jews. So now, this is important to understand. This is very, very important. But let's not stop there. Because now that we have Haman, we can understand Haman right here. Let's, let's connect Hamadatta. Hamadatta. Because who was Hamadatta? He was the son of Hamadatta. Haman. And who was Hamadatta? Hamadatta means one who troubles the law. Now, remember, if you paid attention and, and check out our video that we did on, on Amalek, which is the former, the former um, uh, two or so videos we did before this one. This will be the third or perhaps the third, fourth one in the series. So try to check out the whole series because in, in the Amalek part, the Amalek connection, where we connected the metaphysics of Amalek, one thing that was interesting, we explained how this all occurred on the Simchat Torah, the Simchat Torah is known in 2011 to be October 20th. So when did um, Gaddafi get murked? When did he get murked? He got murked on October 20th. Now, October 20th for us as Hebrews and black Jews and even the other Jews is the Simchat Torah. And Simchat Torah means joy. It means rejoicing in the law, rejoicing in Jah's law. But now when we look at Amalek, Amalek goes against Jah's law. You understand? Like Gaddafi and like his kind. And Hamadatta, who was the father of Haman, his name means, in the Hebrew from the Persian, his name means one who troubles the law, one who troubles Torah. You understand? One who troubles the law. He's an agitator of the law. And if you were to do a little, just do a little research. I'm sure you can find this on the Google. Google Gaddafi, OAU, and Haile Selassie, and look at this loud mouth, no-nothing, bragged idiot boy who was called Gaddafi, who a lot of people thought was some great Pan-African hero because he was able to buy them off, Gubo. You know saying? He was able to buy them off with, with oil money and with blood money. You understand? And, and this is why when you look at Libya, people say, oh, the Libyans are racist because, because they catch some of these African so-called mercenaries. Those African mercenaries in Libya are the same type of so-called black Africans that sold our Hebrew black asses, you understand, to both the Mohammedan Arabs, and the so-called European Christian slave, slave drivers. They're the same sort of people, people you can bribe off very easily with some trinkets or some money. So we don't feel all that sorry if, 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 uh, if uh, Libyans find that these individuals, you understand, whether they are dark-skinned black or from Africa or sub-Saharan Africa, were paid as mercenaries against Again, so you see what Gaddafi did? He paid black Africans as mercenaries to kill off his own people. Now, you, you see, I can't really trust that. I don't, know, I don't know if you can trust that. But as I was talking to a brother um, between the, the, the last part and this part, a brother said to me, he said, um, a Rastafari brother, when we just reasoned about some of these events, and he mentioned that um, he looks at Gaddafi, the, in, the, in the sense of the Arab Ishmael matrix, you know, Ishmael's what a wild ass of a man. And that's, we put that in one of the videos, the Ishmaelite connection. Now we're going a little bit deeper 
You know what I'm saying? Because we can show the Ishmaelite link with Esau and the Edomites, and therefore we find the Ishmaelite link with Amalek, and then we can trace it further, the Ishmaelite link with Haman. And now we look at the metaphysics of the name. We find out that Hamadatta, the father of Haman, means one who troubles the law or an agitator of the law. Now, Gaddafi will get his comeuppance on the 20th of October, which this year... And this year only, because it's a lunar cycle, so it shows that there's a, there's a heavenly witness to it, was the Simchat Torah. And the Simchat Torah, it means rejoicing or the joy of the law. Now, our enemy is a troubler of the law or an agitator of the law. Now, how interesting is that? How interesting is that? Now, some of the history of Agag or, or, or Hamadatta, Hamadatta was an Agagite. That means he was a Pepite. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Pepi. He was father of Haman, son of Hamadatta, the Jews' enemy. The Jews, the Hebrews' enemy. So Gaddafi wasn't just a so-called enemy of Israel, the white Europeans in Israel, you know what I'm saying, the other Jews. He was also an enemy of the black Jews, of the black Hebrews, in particular of Ethiopia and Kedamawi Hala Selassie. He used that oil money you understand, to undermine the kingdom of the king of kings. And then one of the last things he would do is call himself king of kings of Africa or African lion. Yeah, he was lion, all right. You understand, and we see how, how he ended. So now let's look at the metaphysical because we're going to touch on a gag as well or a pet. Because a gag, right, a gag is the adversary. A gag or a pep. A pep is the adversary. What, what do we mean by that? A pep, and we're not talking about just Stargate, SGI, you understand? Even though there's a little link in, in a, in a um, theatrical sense, but it's based on certain, certain principles, even, even a TV show, you understand? We're talking about pep or apophis. But a gag, right? A gag is the adversary. So when you go to Egypt, a pep or a pophis is that old dragon, is that old serpent. And you might have seen this, this kind of poster like. And this poster like, um, it shows like an octopus, like, like Mohammedanism and so called Islam, like an octopus around Ethiopia and strangling Africa. And in every country in, in, in Africa, you see, Africa actually was Christian, was, was Jewish, Hebrew. You understand? In the majority of places now where it's Mohammedan. And in the majority of places where it's Mohammedan, it, they were Judeo-Christian. You understand? And the only one that was able to really hold out and still is holding out right now is Ethiopia, is Ethiopia. You understand? But it's interesting that Gaddafi would say that if if he's no longer around, his, his, his card, the wild card that he, he threw to the West was that he is the only thing stopping um, uh, fanatical Islam. You remember what it says about Hamadatta and Haman, that they are enemies of the religious. They represent a certain type of consciousness, metaphysically speaking, that is against that which is uplifting and the, and the spiritual, the religious values. Because he may have been against the so-called um, um, jihadist so-called influence, but he was also against the moderate, you understand, Islamic influence. Because you remember in this whole, um, this, this Libyan crisis and the civil war so-called in, 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 in Libya, do, do you recall that he bombed mosques? He bombed religious sites? And it's a little bit shocking. You understand? But they do this sort of thing, that they bombed religious houses of worship where people just gathered together and say, we're just tired of this stuff, and he would use his planes to bomb them. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Wow. And they do that to their own so-called religion, because they would still say that they are Islamic, so on and so on. What do you think they would do and have done to us? This is why the Bible says, be study and shirts of approval and be wise as serpent, harmless as doves. So you know what they're up to. So a gag is the adversary. He represents the ruling ego of the adverse and the carnal consciousness in man. Now, Hamadatta, 
who was father of Haman, Hamadatha was father of Haman, the Jew's enemy. He signifies a phase of the carnal, adverse consciousness or the adversarial mind that's in man who works against the law. He worked against the law of being. He, he's the one whose name means Hamadatha, whose name means one who troubles the law, one who's an agitator of the law. Particularly, more particularly, it relates to man's religious thoughts and tendency. Man's highest intellectual and spiritual beliefs and aspirations is what he's against, and that represents we, the Jews, we, the black Jews, and, and, and some, you understand, know many, but some of the, of the other Jews as well. So let's understand this very, very well. Because the Father said he's working the work in these last days that if he was to explain it to us, we wouldn't even understand it. You understand? Now, that now touches on Hamadatta. Hamadatta means one who troubles. So Haman, Haman, whose name means magnificent, splendid, celebrated, was Gaddafi magnificent in his own way in the eyes of many of his followers? Wasn't he splendid? Wasn't he celebrated? Wasn't he the solely famed only one? But wasn't he noisy? It says noise. Haman means noise. He wasn't he arrogant? You understand? Know wasn't he tumultuous? You understand? Know but he had an inner commotion. You understand? Know this is why he had all that tough talk for his enemies and his adversaries. But notice something. When they caught him, where was that braggadocio? Where was all of that? You understand? In other words, he did not even, in that sense, go out like a man, in that sense. I mean, especially for all that he was saying, he was calling these people rats, and they want to say, my sons. After you call the people rats, after you bomb their, their mosque, and you bomb them from the air, and you hired mercenaries, even if they are so-called black African mercenaries, listen, those, some of those Africans, my brothers and sisters, that's, this is a Hebrew consciousness right here. They may be our color, but they're not our kind. Some of y'all are, are going to hear this, you understand, message, but, but you're going to be ignorant, and, and you're going to get it the hard way from these same people you're trusting. Because these same mercenary-type people are the ones, these pirates. See, when we say the old-time pirates, it's not just talking about white folks. When we talk about white supremacy, we're talking systemic. Recognize that systemic because more of the people who hold up white supremacy are non white peoples. Understand this, understand this carefully. Yes, at one time, the majority was the white folks that were really upholding it, but now it's, 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 it's black folks too who are upholding this system, you know. So, um, one more, one more area we want to, one more area we want to touch on right here. Um, give the time check on that. We're at the one forties. Can we can we go about an hour on this? Let's let's hit a pep. Or actually a gog. A gog who is the Egyptian uh, pep. So let's 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 come in with that in the next part when we get an exclusive part on this. So stay tuned, my brothers. Um Shalom Ras Tefari.